Hi, and welcome to Mondays with Marlo. I'm very excited. We've got Jackie <laughs> Warner today. She's a fitness expert. Mm -hmm. Just in the nick of time. We've indulged over the holidays. We want to get back on track. We've made resolutions for the new year. So, And I know what a motivator you are. So we're excited. You're going to motivate us. Do people indulge over the holidays? <laughs> Do we gain five pounds on average over the holidays? Yes, yes we, we do. do. Yes, yes we, do. we do. I ate a chocolate Santa. I made some oh. my place at the table and I had to eat it. I said yes to myself on Christmas Day for everything. And what that meant is I'm from Ohio and my mom makes those homemade Buckeyes. Oh. That peanut butter and chocolate combination. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. It was delicious. Oh, so, man. you know, you have to be able to have moderation. And in general, you want to eat clean for more days than you want to um, spoil and have a, have a meal that's a cheat meal or right. what I call a treat meal. Well, you have to be treated over the holidays. Uh, 100%. I mean that. 100%. Absolutely. And, but now we need you. We, we really need you definitely. I'm here. I'm okay. here. So this first question is from Regina. Hi, Regina. Welcome. What are your three top tips for losing belly fat? I'm in pretty good shape, but I can't lose my belly fat. Right. Belly fat is mostly due to hormone imbalance. So something that, Regina, you're doing in your diet is imbalancing your hormones. First of all, you've got to get plenty of sleep, REM sleep. And a, a little trick to do that, because cortisol is released when you don't get enough sleep, right? Uh -huh. We know that. And cortisol is the uh, hormone that stores belly fat. Um, so what you want to do is just have a little bit of cottage cheese before bed. This is a uh -huh. good protein source. It contains casein, which is a natural relaxant. That's number one. Number two, stop doing crunches. I always say crunches are a waste of time. There's a better exercise to do. You need to always work upper body and lower body when you're doing your crunches. So reverse crunch where you're lifting your legs off the ground simultaneously oh, good. while that. lifting your upper body. And three is don't be afraid to get nice big movements like squats and push-ups. Squats and push-ups are way better for your abdominal region than anything else because oh, it's great. working your core significantly. Right. So incorporate that into your routine and you those should notice are, the difference. Those are great tips. Sure. This is from Naomi. What are the three most common mistakes you think people make when it comes to weight loss? Well, number one is making these goals that are too lofty. So if you say, I want to lose 30 pounds in two months, which by the way is on average what most women say, I want to lose 30 pounds in a couple of months. If I don't see the change, then I, I get distressed and right. I stop doing you know, the method. But um, you, know, you want to make simple goals. And I'm going to give you an example of a really simple goal. One is just drink three liters of water per day. Three liters this, studies. Maybe this thing. Yeah, it's about this tall. And you just keep your fridge stocked and have one in the morning, right with your morning coffee or whatever you have. And uh, drink three liters because studies show that it speeds up your metabolism by about 33%. Right. That's a huge number. And you go to the bathroom a lot. You do go to the bathroom a lot, <laughs> but if I'm going to give you a trick for that. What? If you sneak in some cranberry extract, uh -huh. you'll go to the bathroom less, and it's a kidney detoxifier, so you will actually you know, have to excrete that water a little bit less and you'll hold the water a little bit more. So uh -huh. um, that's number one. Uh, another common mistake when it comes to weight loss is um, is women, you're afraid to lift weights. Don't be afraid to lift oh, weights. no, I'm not at all. Okay, maybe you're not, but I'm <laughs> telling you, as owning two gyms and oh, doing really? this for 15 years, women, they kind of don't, you know, run to the burn, they run away from it. Oh. And so don't be afraid to incorporate resistance training. Remember, the more muscle or tone you have on your frame, the faster your metabolism, and you want that. You want to be a fat burning machine. And the machine. less fat you'll have. Exactly. The more muscle, the yeah, less fat. Right. You're totally right in that. Right. Um, and then uh, number three is incorporate like one thing in your diet that's a super, what I call superstar food. Not just a superfood, but a superstar food. I'll give you an example. Start having a grapefruit a day. A grapefruit has a superstar ingredient, ingredient called naringin, and that is a major metabolizer and, and um, muscle booster, and it's a fast metabolizer, and it's so good for you. So what, naringin. What other than grapefruit? Uh, oatmeal. You should uh -huh. have consistent in your diet yeah, oatmeal. It's a fantastic fiber. It really helps accelerate weight loss. And you also want, please, 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 really try to make a conscious effort to eat free range. Meats are good in terms of putting on muscle. Um, but you really need to make a good choice and eat free-range meats. I saw Jerry Seinfeld the other yeah. day, and he was saying, when I think of range, I think of this home on the range and all these chickens running yeah. around with John Wayne and all these horses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love the idea of free I range. do like that. <laughs> 
Billy, I sit at my office desk all day long. Are there any exercises I can do at work that are actually effective and won't make me look ridiculous? Yeah, I'm going to actually make you look hot. This is a training. <laughs> this is a training. I, it, I take it from my MMA training, and it's called 300s, and it is a little brutal. It's very intense, but you can do it in seven minutes, and you can totally do it in your office. Now, it goes like this. You do 10 squats, 10 push-ups, 10 sit-ups, really fast and hard, and you repeat that 10 times. Wow. Okay, so you do that, it takes about seven minutes if you do it properly, and that's a really good all over body workout. And all of those exercises kind of look good as you're doing that. <laughs> and I like that. I don't like to do exercises that make me look silly. Well, you, you, well, you have to be wearing pants though. Or a full skirt. I'm assuming that Billy's wearing pants <laughs> at the office. I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, this is from Marlene. How can I stay motivated as I'm trying to lose weight? I'll do great for a week or two, and then I just lose interest. Motivation is a big deal. Can you give us any tips on that? Motivation is a really big deal. And, you know, it's interesting because you just have to wake up and you have to decide, you know, do you want to live your life with a bright glowing energy or do you want to be suppressed when you're making wrong decisions for yourself or when you're falling into unhealthy behaviors or addiction which food is an addiction it's just a coping mechanism like mm -hmm. anything else yeah. when you're doing that there's a sense of failure and self-loathing that comes from that you really have to wake up one morning and just say today is a day that I would like to actually burn at my brightest I'd like to change the energy of myself and those around me and it's time for me to take control of my life and then again you have to set those small goals Right. You know, like drinking the water, just making a dietary change, a couple of things in your diet per day. Mm -hmm. And if you accomplish that on a daily basis, that's going to be a self-esteem builder. And then you'll be mo more motivated to make long-term change. And also when you get a little bit off, you know, when you lose a little bit of weight. It's one day. Right. And you get, a, and you get, your muscles start to look a little bit better. That's, right. that's what motivates me. It's Just a little result and I'm, I'm in. It's a, it's a, exactly. You know, we are very results driven and right. you can get a good result. Just eat clean. This is what well, I always look say. Look at you. I mean, my God, talk about good results. Thank you. I train and I'm 44 and I'm in great shape great. in my life. Thank you. And I train every day. I train six days a week, actually, and wow. I train an hour every day of my life, and I enjoy it. I need it for here. The brain chemistry, it right. releases dopamine, serotonin, right. all those great things that we need to feel good about ourselves. How, how long do you do aerobic for? Um, 20 minutes. Oh, great. Yeah, 20 minutes, but I do high-intensity interval training. Right. So that is more of an intense training. So what you do is you let your heart rate drop. So you can do maybe an uphill climb for two minutes, and then you increase it way up by doing a two-minute sprint, and then right. a cool down, and you alternate that I until you that. reach 20. Well, you look great. Thank you. Uh, this is from Blair. If I'm short on time, what are two or three of the best moves to work my entire body? Yeah, this is great. Um, what you want to do is a multi-joint routine. I actually have a DVD out where it's just multi-joint. Multi-joint, oh, really? yeah, and, so, and it, I think it's my most popular DVD. And what it is, is it's an upper body and lower body workout simultaneously. So I'll give you an example. When you're doing a squat, you're doing a military press, which is simply a, a shoulder press right. with the weights. When you're doing a lunge, you're doing a bicep curl simultaneously. Right. So not only is it, does it keep you in the fat burning mode for about 12 to 15 hours after, um, you are in very cardiovascular mode, but you're also resistance training, so you're putting on that muscle. I've got to get this DVD. What's it called? Um, <laughs> I've got five DVDs and I always forget the title. <laughs> That's so good. I know. Um, I believe, well, this is the multi-joint workout. If you go to JackieWarner.com, all my DVDs are there. But it's called the multi-what workout? It's a multi-joint compound okay. movement workout. I'm getting that. That yeah. sounds good. This is from Catherine. What's the most effective way to tone my core and my abs? Yeah, it, let me tell you, everybody has core and abs work. Um, I also have another DVD, and this, yeah. I'm not just trying to promote my DVDs, no, no, but I've got to tell you, um, I address this, and it is a crunch-free, all crunch-free exercises for the abdominals. And, you know, I'm going to give you... You do a, the plank? Yeah, you do versions of the plank. I like the plank. I do an amplified plank. So we're not just holding a plank position. Right. We'll do like an elbow to knee touch. So you're in a plank position position and you literally go in a wow. diagonal and touch your elbow to your knee oh come my. back out and touch opposite elbow to knee or you can do up down plank and this is a fantastic movement where you start in a plank position you drop to one elbow drop to another elbow come up and come up how many out there can do that not I, me i'm not raising my hand on that you one. know what you could <laughs> i'm telling you really? you could do it yes wow that sounds very exciting uh this is from chris Christy, what moves do you see misperformed by most of the clients? 
Um, I would say a lot of moves. People don't know what proper form is, and it drives me crazy at the gym. If I got involved with everybody, I would never get my workouts in. I hate to go to the gym and see some guy going like this with a, with a weight and think, are yeah. you crazy? I, I, I think just in terms of, you know, I, I, one really bad move is pull downs, lap pull downs. So uh -huh. everybody's seen it at the gym where you hold a wide right. bar and you pull down, you're supposed to pull down right in front of you, in front of your chin. Right. So I see people doing that behind their head, right, which right. is so old school. I know, I know. And that's really hard on the rotator cuffs. And I see that all the time. Or you're right, doing the moves in a really jerky manner right. that's not controlled. You should really be doing a count of two right. and a count of two on the negative, right. a count of two on the positive contraction. Right. Right. So That's good. Slower is best. Doing things right with, 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 motor, uh, with what do you call it, intention, right? Doing it with intention, but once you get enough musculature and you've got your form right, there's different ways of training that you can do fast. Like there's a style of training when we want to get through a plateau that you go fast on the positive and you go slower on the negative uh -huh, contraction. Uh -huh. So there's all kinds of variations, but you do have to be at more of an advanced level to do that. And I bet you got a DVD about this, right? I have actually, <laughs> I've got pyramid training, which is a really cool plateau busting training Great. that I pulled right Right out of my book and, for and myself. is your website just jackie jackie we'll find yeah. it we'll find that okay this is from vicky hi jackie your gym accepted health insurance for exercise and were the first in la to do so how did you get the insurance company to accept that are doctors and insurance companies closer to realizing the importance of exercising for health what do you think it'll take i was one of the first in, in the industry to create a physical therapy and a chiropractic center in a gym setting so we had a clinic and we had a gym connected and what we were able to do is we were able to legally bill for therapeutic exercise um, because you, anybody can do this, physical therapy, chiropractic, you know, any kind of exercise that you are strengthening your musculature. So remember, the muscles hold the bones in place. Right. If you have an adjustment and you are, don't have enough muscle, the, you're gonna, your adjustment's going to go right out. But how long will that last? Because I know that, well, like, for example, when I broke my wrist and I had to have physical therapy, they only give you so many months in the insurance. And then they figure, well, now you're better. You can't have... You can't have physical therapy forever on your broken arm. No, you can't, but you can go to a chiropractor forever. So we uh -huh. would switch either from physical therapy to chiropractic. Uh -huh. Amazing. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. This is from Ruth. I would like to lose 35 pounds this year. My joints are good and I'm ready to start. So what to do? Lift, cardio? A combination of both. Lifting mm -hmm. and cardio is good. You know, people have to understand that lifting is fantastic for joint stabilization. Uh -huh. And it really bones it, it really builds bone density. Mm -hmm. So your bones actually thicken with resistance training. Right. So it's so healthy for you. So a good combination, I would start at, you know, start at about thirty minutes where you do about fifteen minutes of cardio to start and then 15 minutes of uh, good intense resistance training. I like to incorporate power circuit training, which is a combination of exercises, you know, done like four to six exercises back to back, back with no or little rest in between. Right. Yeah. And then that interval cardio, which and I, then that, I love that. Yeah, the interval yeah. cardio. Uh, this is Yolanda. I lose my appetite at dinner time. Sometimes I skip dinner, but I know skipping meals is bad. Do you have any suggestions of what I could eat? I don't eat flour or dairy. This is this is very typical. I'm famished when I wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. I have cereal and fruit. I have a protein drink after I yeah. work out. And by five o'clock, I'm like through eating. I have right. to make myself eat. Do you hear this a lot? Uh, I, I know that people skip meals a lot, but let me tell you, when I was working with morbidly obese clients, the, the string of similarity between those clients is they skip meals. Really? Yes, because well, let me just kind of tell you what happens. You skip meals, your blood sugar plummets, it drops, your insulin levels drop, and what happens is the next thing that you put in your mouth is almost twice as effectively stored as fat. Oh, wow. So you don't want to skip meals. Now we know, and enough knowledge is out there, that you really do want to eat five small meals throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And by the way, while you're sleeping, your blood sugar drops. It's a long time to go without food. Mm -hmm. So your blood sugar drops, you, that's why your morning meal is the most, they say, the most important right. meal of the day. Um, but you really do want to eat breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, and dinner and then be done with it right yeah and but for dinner what would you suggest um, I like a protein, so always, you know, a good free-range uh -huh. protein again. Right. Um, you do want a carbohydrate. You can have like a piece of whole grain bread, or you can have a, a sweet potato is a fantastic carbohydrate. Right. You can have brown rice. Wild rice is even better. It's even more amazing. The darker the rice, the better. Um, you know, couscous, quinoa, these are all good carbohydrates that uh -huh. are good for you. So the protein, the carbo, and then... 
And then, of course, a good fat. So make it with a little bit of olive oil or slice up some avocado and put it on there. Right. Remember, fat, good fat burns fat. Right. So nuts, seeds, and I mean, you know, blanched, not right. seasoned. And pistachio nuts, nuts are supposed to be great for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, better when they're raw, though. Right. Better when they're raw. Right. Uh, sprinkle those on salads. I, I like to put them on if you're going to uh, have like uh, goat's milk, yogurt, or something like that. Uh, Greek yogurt, you can put it on that and that's good. This is from Terry. No matter what I do, I can't seem to get rid of my arm flab. I hate it. Are there any exercises that can target this specific area? Yeah, you, you remember you can't, uh, your body genetically decides where it's going to store fat. I know. That's genetics. That's right. So you, you know, many men and women, even though athletic, they either, they shrink in size, but they never, you know, lose fully the muffin top. That's genetics. Mm -hmm. um, so what you can do is you can s spot tone. You can mm -hmm. definitely do that. So you want to, you know, incorporate more tricep exercises. Remember the tricep is made up of three muscles, tri, right. and you want to work each one of those muscles. So mm -hmm. you want to work all three muscle groups. So you can do a combination of kickbacks, right. a combination of bench dips, right. a combination of overhead presses right. of any kind right. using a barbell and or dumbbell. And I love the pull down. You can do the press down. Yeah. yeah, you can do the straight bar. You can do the rope. You right. can do a head banger with that mm -hmm. rope. You know. So there's a, a lot of variations for working the triceps. But you also want to work the biceps. So you want to work that muscle as well and the shoulder right. because that's what makes a beautiful arm. So you're working your deltoids, right. your tricep, your bicep, and there's a number number of exercises to do so just go online there's a ton of free con yeah, content i love them this is from karen hi jackie i am not a fitness person <laughs> i hate the gym and i won't stand in front of my tv doing exercise videos <laughs> so how can i she's stay defiant fit? I this mean, one really she wants to know how she can stay fit without feeling like i'm working out do you know any of the creative alternatives? Well, what? I don't understand this question. This is somebody that really hates, this is someone that <laughs> runs from the burn. This right. is somebody that's not athletic and that really, you know, probably sees the gym as manual labor and really so resists she needs it. to get outside and run. Yeah, she needs to, here's what I suggest. Um, it's something that you've always secretly wanted to try. So maybe like hip hop dance or Pilates or boxing, something that you've always kind of wanted to try, but you never have, go online, because you know the internet is amazing, go online, type in your zip code and the thing that you want to try. And there's going to be a probably, oh, that's great. isn't that a great yeah. idea? And there's probably going to be a class in your area with that thing. And remember, a class is fantastic because you've got other people that are all, you know, looking for the same thing and right. going through the same thing. And they're there as a support system for you. So try that. That sounds like a great idea. Uh, this is from Carmen. My New Year's resolution is to lose weight, but I have a demanding job and no time to cook healthy meals. Do you have suggestions for nutritious foods that I can get from restaurants or I can grab to take with me? Yeah, there's two options here. One uh, with restaurants, oh my gosh. Okay, well, my first book has 10 minute meals under oh, yeah. 450 calories and nine grams of sugar. So if you've got 10 minutes, grab my first book. It's called This Is Why You're Fat and How to Get Thin Forever. <laughs> um, and uh, that's got fantastic meals. Or you can go to highhealth.com and I've got a little cookbook that comes free with my, um, and it's all 10 minute meals again that are nutritious that comes with my product line. You can do that. Or with restaurants, you, you really, um, you can make good choices in restaurants, but again, you're gonna, they're gonna be full of chemicals. That's a problem. So if you're eating chicken or steak or red meats and things like that, just know that it's, it's gonna be toxic. What's an example of a 10 minute meal? A 10 minute meal would be for instance, um, well, you can do, I'm trying to think of a delicious one. Well, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll, that'd be good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of things, like you can do roasted chicken with some rosemary and some garlic. Um, you know, I, I love roasting potatoes. Potatoes are not an enemy, by the way. No. Like the little nude potatoes, those yeah. are actually really good for you. Oh, really? And have fat burning properties. Um, so you can roast those uh, with a little olive oil and again, um, do just like a quick instant rice. But I'm not giving my cookbook service because I haven't reviewed it in a little while. These meals are really creative. I worked with Sunfair, which is like this huge like celebrity delivery diet system. Oh, really? That I was on and then I was giving clients and was so impressed with, and they made these meals with me. That's great. So that's, you can get it online or you can go to the book and get that. That's great. This is from Krista. I get sick a lot in the winter with sinus infections, colds, etc. But I don't want to let this interrupt my workout. So what kind of exercise can I do when I'm feeling under the weather. Now, Krista is the exact opposite of Karen. Right. Karen doesn't want to have a workout. Right. She Krista doesn't, want, doesn't to want to miss a workout, even if she's sick. 
Um, well, here's the thing. Usually you can do cardio when you, not with a fever. So you shouldn't work out if you're even carrying a slight fever. So get a thermometer and check that if you are prone to sickness. Um, because that can actually crank you into, weaken your right, immune system, right, right. your workouts. Um, but if you feel like you've got a cold or you're just fighting it or your body <laughs> is trying to fight it, your workouts can help you build your immune system. Um, so some light cardio would be a good idea. And go ahead and continue your resistance training. Just lighten your weights a little bit and maybe go a little lighter. So maybe 20 minutes instead of 45 minutes, for example. But let me give you a little tip. There's a supplement out there. It, you can get it anywhere. And it's called branch chain amino acids. Have you heard of these? No. BCAAs. Uh -huh. This is an amazing supplement. They're just amino acids and they really, really boost the immune system. So take this all the time. Not you should be taking sick. it all the time, especially if you're working out because they also, all the research shows that they help, um, they, they help maintain musculature. So you get more bang for your buck in the gym. And I, I take emergency every day. Emergency you do. CC. A thousand milligrams of C every day. Yeah. And it's kept me from getting a cold. For a long C, time. Vitamin C is amazing. Yeah. This is from Marie. Hi, Jackie. I'm so inspired by your story. I'm interested in pursuing a career as a fitness trainer, and I'd love to open my own gym one day. How did you get started? You were like 22, right? Well, no, I actually was a, I owned a cellular, a really big cellular company when I was 21. Oh, and I wow. sold that, so I was in the cellular industry. I sold that business at 25. I started working for Warner Brothers. I got into that. I wrote a script. I sold a script. So I was wow. really creative. I've done many, many things. I mean, I have taken many, many jobs before I got into my profession. Um, um, but what I had passion for is when I got certified, which was at 30 years old, and I got certified, and I was so passionate about it because I found, wow, I not only can get people a six, you know, six pack abs and change their body, <coughs> but while working with me, they're changing their entire trajectory of their lives. Absolutely. And their their energy is changing, their work environment is changing, they're getting better jobs, their whole lives are changing. Once I found that, I was hooked. And then, of course, as a business owner, I owned a gym a year after I got certified. So then I've always owned gyms and the physical therapy centers that we talked about. That's amazing. Thank you. You're great. Perry, I have a friend who needs to lose 40 pounds but smokes. He's afraid to stop smoking because he says then he'll just put on more weight. How do I help motivate him to work out? I really care about him. Yeah, here's the problem. This is what nicotine is doing for, for your friend. It's actually releasing serotonin and dopamine in pretty large levels. Now, this is the chemical in your brain that makes you feel good, makes you feel safe, makes you feel a little high. Um, and, and, you know, again, that's why cigarettes are such a good coping mechanism for people. And that's the same people. thing that's released when you exercise, right? Exactly. That's what I was getting yeah. to, Marlo, is it's the same thing that's released through exercise. So if he, I've had a lot of clients come to me that are avid smokers, and I don't say a word to them. I just say, you know, your body's going to take care of that itself. The more you exercise, if he gets into it consistently on a daily basis or at least five times a week, his body will start rejecting that chemical, and the dopamine will be released from the exercise, and he won't need such a large level of it in the nicotine. That's a great tip. Go to it, Perry. This is great. <laughs> this is from Jerry. Is it better to work your entire body in one day or should you work on different parties each day? Should you work abs Monday, legs Tuesday, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yes, it's better to work yeah. different m muscle groups. I work two muscle groups each day. Yeah. So I've got what's called a three-day split. It's called a split is when you work you know, different muscle groups on different days. So I'll give you an example of my routine. I'll work legs on in one day and shoulders. And then on another day, I'll work chest and biceps. And on another day, I'll work triceps and back. And I work those very heavily with that power circuit training that we talked about. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll do different exercises the following week, but on that same split, if uh -huh. that makes sense. Um, so it's good. And you can do you can do a split that's a, a, a six-day split where you just work one muscle group you very thoroughly. You can work three muscle groups. I don't suggest you work more than three muscle groups on one day, but you can do that, like two secondary well, and one how primary. Many, if you really want to get your biceps, which is always the thing for me, then what I'm doing is... How many is, times a week should you be doing them? Twice a week. Twice a week. Yeah, twice a week and intensely. Right. Uh, so, for instance, on my bicep routine, I combine two, four, six different exercises with three sets. That's a lot. Yeah. So that's, that's really three times six, that's 12. That's great. Yeah. Wonderful. There you have it. This is from Sylvia. My physical therapist says that running is very hard on your back. Is walking fast better for you? Same thing. It's it just, walking fast, you're going to have an impact and you pretty much, because running is, if you're running properly, you shouldn't be bouncing and you shouldn't be flat foot. You should be running 
as a cushion heel to toe. Uh, what you can do and what is helpful that I learned from my physical therapist that worked for me is a, to put it on a slight incline. Because if you put your treadmill on a slight incline, it forces you to run heel to toe, right? Right. So that's going to be helpful. Um, but if you're running outside, then maybe you But if you're running outside... You suggest running outside? I, I love trail running. That's my favorite favorite like thing to, outside, to do. Yeah. I love to be outside. But if he's, if he's got low back issues and his doctor is saying, this is exacerbating your low back issues, then right. he shouldn't do it. So what I suggest is he's going to have to join a gym. He's going to get on the, the bike, the recumbent bike. He's going to get on the elliptical trainer. He can crank that resistance up to get a really good leg and glute right. workout and do it that way. Great. Um, this is from Jerry. How important is it to consume protein before and after your workout to build muscle. I always heard it was better to have protein after. Guess what's more important? What? Carbs. Really? After yeah, the muscles workout? run on sugar. Really? Muscles run on sugar. So this before is or after? Before and after. So like have an orange before? Uh, what I had, I would know, not just fruit alone. I like to have um, a cup of oatmeal with some mixed frozen berries uh -huh. on there. So I put some berries on it and I have that pre-workout and then post-workout I have a really good balanced breakfast of you know, again, protein to fat to carbohydrate ratio. So an example of that would be two eggs, um, two chicken sausage, you know, pieces, um, and a piece of whole grain toast. Uh, that's a really good protein to fat to carb ratio. There you have it. It's from Candy. Does saggy skin go back once you lose the weight? Yeah, no. Here's the thing. Um, that's about collagen loss, and that happens, unfortunately, as you age. It also happens with sugar happens with sugar intake. Oh really? Yes it does. It breaks down the collagen so if you want to get rid of wrinkles you better decrease that sugar. So if you have saggy skin once you lose weight. Yeah once you lose weight it's very that's difficult. That's kind of the bad news of losing weight. It's, so. it's the, pr the problem is is that you really need to eat foods that increase your um, HGH production which is human growth hormone so um, which I, will build collagen. Oh this is a good tip. So to get saggy skin it's not going to ever snap back, so let's not. <laughs> <laughs> but to I don't want to give you a false hope, but to hope to help a little bit and get more collagen production, right? We should eat. You should be eating those again, the proteins, the things with amino acid. Right. So that's the chicken and that's the turkey, things that are eggs. Uh, eggs, exactly. The two eggs that I told you that you should just take as a boiled eggs as a snack every day. Right. Um, and then a ton of vegetables. You should be eating four to five free uh, servings of vegetables every day. Four wow. to five. Is that what you do? Yeah. I force myself. I don't even like vegetables. <laughs> I know they're so good for my skin and so good for me. So what do you I eat? I force Which myself. Ones? Well, I, I hate to say this, but I microwave things because I'm always on the go. But um, I will uh, eat a, a lot of spinach. I eat spinach yeah. every day. Right. I drink a green juice, a yeah. fresh green juice with kale and spinach and cucumber and celery in it. Um, and I eat broccoli. I make myself just eat the broccoli. I cook it and I eat it. And kale? Do you have the kale chips? I don't care for kale oh. chips, but I think it's great for those who do like vegetables, then definitely. Right. So that's about three servings that I've just given you, and then I sneak it into my protein shake. I put a little uh, spinach, frozen spinach in my protein shake, so wow. there you go. Good for you. Uh, this is from Robin. I've lost 11 pounds since November 1st. How do I change my weight? How do I change up my weight loss besides doing DVDs and walking? I work three to five days a week, 45 to 60 minutes. I'm scared I might plateau soon. Any advice? Also, thanks for your DVDs. They really have helped me. So what the, the question is, is uh -huh. she doesn't want to plateau. Right. So how does she change up? Well, there's a great workout that you can do. What you do, it's called pyramid training. And you combine two exercises together and you do one repetition. I'll give you an example. Let's say a chest press. So lie down on the mat and take some free weights and do a chest press. Sit up and do a bicep curl. So do one repetition of each movement and then do two repetitions of each movement, three repetitions until you go up the pyramid to 10. That is a major plateau buster because you are forcing yours, it's called forced reps training, and you are really breaking through plateaus and building muscle that way, and that's a great one. That's great, now we're running out of time and I, 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 I just wanna get some more in here. Let's see, this is from Gretchen. I wanna train for a half marathon in April. I run recreationally. What's the best way to get ready for a half marathon? I probably don't have time to train with a group or a class. I'd have to do it on my own. Yeah, she's going to have... The best way to train for something is to do sports-specific training. So if you're running a marathon, that's lots of running. So you really, really have got to, to get your running going. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if you wanted to train for a half marathon... So a half marathon is, what, 13 miles, right? A, a real marathon is 26, right. right? So it's 13 miles. So what? You, how, how should she do this? Should she get up to 13 miles? Should she... Um, 
Well, uh, she should, yeah, she needs to get move, you know, get right. up to 13 miles, so start training three miles a day, right. and then start increasing your speed and increasing your time, right. and terrain training is really good because you have to constantly keep your mind stimulated, um, and you just have to work for it. When I train cops for their tests or police officers for their tests, we have to do the things within the tests. Uh -huh. Yeah. So she should be training outside, right? She should be training yeah. outside, so or she running. can train on a, on a treadmill, yeah. yeah. So, it, you know, again, you want to you want to get that good healthy sweat. You want to chase the burn. Please people, don't run from it. I'm working with I'm saying that because I work with Whisk uh, laundry detergent. Oh, that's what you do. Yeah, I'm working with Whisk. I've partnered with Whisk laundry detergent. And what we're doing is we've got a work it, whisk it campaign. Uh -huh. And it's really giving tons of tips for people and how they can really get a healthy workout. And again, get a good, healthy sweat going, which is a sign of health and wellness. Um, and knowing what does that have to do with whisk working because out? Because whisk cleans the deep down stains so whisk cleans all oh. those little body oils in your clothes right. so all the oils you can feel good that whisk is going to take them out oh that's i've right. been using it for years so okay. i was and great works, to partner right? with them yeah so, good okay now let me just see we have so many other things here okay all right uh let's see i have <laughs> so uh, little time so many questions I know. this is from deer drive chronic pain in my neck and upper back was told the cardio i was doing running and zumba were making it worse my doctor said to incorporate weights to strengthen the area but everything seems to aggravate it help well, here's the thing. Um, when you have chronic pain and you've got something, first of all, I'd like to know what her doctor's diagnosis is. Oh. She needs to get, please get a proper diagnosis. Know mm. exactly what you're dealing with. Right. If you can afford it, a trainer from a really well-respected gym, go online, do your research, in, investigate, and find a good trainer that works with other doctors and chiropractors, just right. like my trainers did. And um, they'll work within that diagnosis. So let's say that you've got a herniated disc. Well, there's there's a specific training that you should be doing and you need to work with a reputable trainer in order to do that that works with chiropractors and physical therapists. Um, I only have like time for a couple more. Uh, this is from Steve. What exercise would you recommend for someone who has balance and mobility issues due to nerve damage from back surgery? Right. Well, this is... You know, this is definitely a medical question that a doctor should be answering. Um, but just, you know, I, I, you know, if you've got nerve damage from a back surgery, you really need to talk to your doctor about what he recommends. Right. Like nerve damage is a little out of my realm. Right, and right, I don't right. want to give him something I, that's going to aggravate him. I, I, I have nerve damage, by the way. I'll give you my example. Um, I've got a herniated disc in my neck, and I've had it for years due to an accident I had like many years ago. And so the, the nerve is literally being compressed by discs that are rubbing it raw. Uh -huh. And so that shoots down my arm and gives wow. me trouble and even goes into my fingers. That's nerve damage. Now, the one thing I've learned is when I stop working out and I stop doing shoulder movements and stop the muscles stop building around the, the spine, mm. I have pain. Right. That's what happens. I have pain. When I continue to work out and continue to build, again, that muscu around muscular... Around the injury. Yeah, around the injury. Right. That's when I'm pain free. That's great. So he doesn't want to rule it out. Uh, this is an important question. This is from Martha. Hi, Martha. I'm glad you're with us. She says, I'm in a wheelchair and I can't get on the floor to exercise. Other than arm exercises, is there anything I can do? Um, well, it depends on why she's in the wheelchair. Uh -huh. If she's a paraplegic, then you can't really work lower body movements, right, right. but she can do certainly like some side bends and she can hold the weight right. and she can do with good form, chest out, shoulders back. She can do crunches this way right. in the wheelchair, which I can already feel it in your core. Right, just, right, right. just this movement, right. hold some weights in front of you and do that. And then um, she can do also not just arm movements, but you can do chest flies with right, weights, holding right. it up. Um, and, and shoulders. And shoulders. Uh -huh. Well, that's, that's typically what people think right, of when they think of right, arms. Right. Okay, uh, we have one time for one more question. So let me just let's try this one. This is from Platt. Is a water aerobics resistance training good for you, and does it help in toning and weight loss? Um, you know that's questionable. This is a good question because it is really good, especially if you're dealing with injuries, which apparently a lot of um, viewers and readers are. Um, it's fantastic. Um, it it it's really. It is really good for you, but let me tell you, there's something called water weight. And this is what happens when you're swimming a lot in the pool and you're using that as your main workout. Your body, it's such a beautiful machine. It really does do interesting things, but it creates sort of a little tiny layer of protective fat around all of your organs and around your, your muscles. Wow. And so to get really lean and cut, 
it's not my first go-to. Uh-huh. It's something that if you enjoy, you should definitely incorporate, and it is very good cardiovascular training. Right. But, you know, for me, and if I'm... if you have injuries, it's a good thing. Uh, if you've got injuries, it's a fantastic right. go-to. Right. It's a really good go-to. Right. Yeah. Well, you're great. Thank you. We all want to look just like you. Thank you. So we're going to do everything you said. <laughs> Every word so of when it. when you come back, we look like you. Thank you okay. so much. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah. I've had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.